Hello there, my mate Vince here, and in this video today we're going to try to fix up this PlayStation 5. I haven't attempted a repair on one of these before, so it's the first on the channel. Normally I would plug it in to test it, listen to this. Now that is a good rattle, so I think it would be wise not to plug it in. Also, the description was uh, very good. It basically said, it didn't say the original cause of the problem, but they said they took it to a repair shop and paid £30 for diagnosis, and they said the only problem was the motherboard, but, you know, pretty much most of the problems are going to be motherboard related, and it needs some tracks rebuilding, and it was going to be £150, but then the seller said that he just decided to go over to Xbox. So I don't know what the deal is there. I'm curious. The reason I bought this, I probably massively overpaid for it. I paid £225, I think it was. And there's not even, this is the digital edition. There's no disc slot here at all, so it's purely digital games. So yeah, obviously I've paid a lot of money for it, but it's a current console, so it's going to be expensive. Uh, the reason I've got it is because I thought it'd be quite interesting to see what £150 worth of repair shop buys you. Will it just be one or two traces, or is it going to be a complete and utter mess? Is that the only problem? How bad is it going to be? And is it going to be fixable by someone who's not a repair shop? Let's get going. Right now, if you look closely here, you can see there's two bits sticking out here and two sticking out here. So that's where you need to lift and push off to the side. Oh, well, the bottom one's, uh, <laughs> the other side's come off. That's helpful. Oh, it's this way. Sorry, that way there. Right, okay. Now. We've just got millions and millions of screws to undo. So let's undo them all, and then I'll, uh, I'll slow the video down when we'll see what's rattling on the inside. Right, pretty dusty. Oh, okay, so this is the thing that's uh, falling around the place. So this goes on the back of the APU somewhere around here, doesn't it? Now, annoyingly, these have liquid metal in them. And I haven't got any liquid metal, so I'm not quite sure what I'm gonna do with that. I'm hoping maybe it won't get everywhere. Uh, right, okay, let's uh, undo some of these things here. Well, that was already undone. Just undo all these screws. Just notice that these two cables here have been trapped. You can see they're damaged. So uh, I wonder if they're going to be much slack to remake them. They're little coaxial cables. If you have a look there, can you see that they've got damage on them? They're going to be for Wi-Fi or Bluetooth or something like that. So now those screws actually came out nice and easy because there's uh, they were all nice and short, so it wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. There's a lot of them though. Okay, right, uh, I can't see any, oh God, here, oh yeah. Oh, is that liquid, is that liquid metal that's spilled? Look, can you see just here? There's any marks on this part here. Well, why, how would liquid metal get there? That's, uh, that's liquid metal. 
Mm, yeah, I don't think that's the damage. I think that's just uh, from taking it apart. Right, let's get a cotton bud and clean that up. Actually, I'll just get some uh, tissue. Just can get some IPA on that. And I can see a tiny little scratch mark here, but that's fine, that's just on the ground. Just putting some gloves on because IPA ruins my hands. So does doors, haha. <laughs> Right, okay, there's no damage there whatsoever. That looks fine. The damage must be on the other side of the board. Right, this big cable here is undone as well. So, is this ready to lift? No, one more screw here. Da, 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 da. Okay. Uh, right, well, I can see the liquid metal has definitely pulled down this side, which is the, uh, the big debate about the vertical, but there has been a part. And I can see some uh, weird little blue mark on here. I'm just going to leave that to one side. I'm sure it's of no importance whatsoever. Now, traces that are damaged. Where are you? Oh, dearie me. Wow. Yeah, look here. Right, let's move this out of the way so I don't get... Oh, look at that. Obvious now. Fully burnt out there, isn't it? Which corresponds to here. Right, so I'm definitely going to need a donor board. Hold on one minute, this is the thing that's wrapping around. So what's that about? Oh, that's from this thing. That must clip into here. Anyway, I can worry about that later or a long way off from putting that back on. Now let's zoom in on this mess. I don't think this is going to be fixable because it's this is a multi-layer board. So and this is a ground plane under there. I think that's burnt right the way through. Okay, so here we have it. So this is one big power. Let's see if it's similar to the uh, the one feeding this one. So it's going to be something like that, isn't it? Yeah. So it's one of them. And we have, what's that? Two here, two there, two there, three there, and one there. So it's two and a two, three and a one. So now, that's the, must be the one. That must be the three. And they must be the two. And these are the other two. That is a right mess, isn't it? See, it looks like it's already been cleaned up. So I wonder why. I wonder why they didn't go that little bit further and uh, fix it. Or are they going to charge £150 just for, you know, for replacing that? Tracks need rebuilding. So maybe underneath here, you see, some traces have gone. And maybe they, the repair shop, know that you need to go from here to, you know, over here somewhere. You know, to run jumpers. I'm not going to know where to run jumpers to. Right, let's just get some IPA over this area. That really has burnt out, hasn't it? So it doesn't look like any water damage or anything. It looks like a failed component. So maybe, I'm just saying, maybe if the board is fixable, then I might be able to sort of measure the components on here if some of the components have been blown away. Like, for example, where are the two capacitors? They're long gone. As you can see, we have two big ones and two small ones there. But they're, they're probably going to measure the same. Do you know what's just crossed my mind? I wonder whether they did the work of separating here. Because look, that chip's not burnt, is it? It looks like the uh, it's this area here that's burnt. 
So do you reckon a capacitor failed really bad and blew up? And they've separated out the shorts, but they didn't bother connecting up. Do you remember these bits were not connected up? These bits down here. Do you remember this wasn't connected for the power button and this wasn't connected? Do you reckon they sort of done the work but then just thought, uh, you know, we'll get more out of the customer? You know, no, not in a bad way. You know, obviously they can't be doing all this work for £30. But maybe then the customer said no and they just, uh, you know, didn't bother connecting it up again. Maybe the work had already been done. I'm going to just try to uh, roughly put it back together. Oh, this is all ripped and chewed up as well. See here. What's this? This is to do with the... Uh, well, this is only to do with the lights, but that's all chewed up. So, uh, yeah, that needs work. That's it. Do I need anything else? Let's pop the fan in. Uh, I don't need the fan in, do I? Let's plug it in and see what it does. Right, is it going to go bang? Here we go. Da, 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 da. Ready? Nothing. Hmm. I was expecting to get some sort of beep. I presume this is the board down here that turns it on. Yeah, it is, yeah. Hmm. It's not even attempting to turn on, is it? So does that mean I'm not I'm not gonna have twelve volts here because the power supply is not being told to turn on? Let's just see. No, nothing there at all. So I'm not going to have any voltage in the board because, uh, yeah, interesting. I wonder if I've got like a short across here. I've got a full short. Hmm. Right, let's pull the board out again. Right, so let's go straight onto the board here. Well, I'll tell you what, let's see, will I have 12 volts here or does it need to be told to turn on? No, I should have 12 volts here, shouldn't I? Because it doesn't go back. Let's, uh, let's plug in and see if we have 12 volts there. Then we know the power supply is okay. Hmm. Yeah, we do, 12 volts. Right, so there's definitely a short on the board. So if we go here and here, we should have a nice big short. Which we do. Yeah, so there we go. That's uh, you know, that's completely the same as my leads going down. You can see now my meter's gone back to reading really well. Yeah, full short. Okay. Now we have to find that, so I presume it's related to here. I wonder should I take this off to begin with, just in case that uh, MOSFET is put in the uh, short on. Right, just looking from my eye loop here, which can sometimes be better than looking through the uh, the camera. Uh, yeah, remember this is gonna be a multi-layer board. I don't know how many layers, there might be like seven, eight layers. I think that that top layer looks very close to the next layer. This burn has gone through many layers. Let's pop off this MOSFET because it looks a mess anyway. Still might be workable though, but uh, obviously it'd be best to replace it, but I haven't got a donor board at the moment. Let's pop this off and then it will give us more room to work and try to understand maybe the layers off the board around here. So I'm just gonna get a little bit of flux, use some hot air and pop this off. I presume now this board's gonna drain heat away lovely, so I'm sure it's gonna be a bit of a struggle. Just putting some flux around the area just to make it a little bit easier to uh, take off. And just because I'm dealing with heat, let's pop out this battery here. Because it's a little lithium cell. Out of curiosity, obviously this uh, console is still new, so I'm sure the battery's fine. I just want to measure, see if we do have three volts. Yeah, we do.
Right, temperature 500 degrees Celsius, yes, Celsius, and 120 airflow out for possible 200. Just going to get some heat into the area to begin with. So I think the reason we've got the short is I think maybe the top layer is shorting with the layer underneath. So it might be like 12 volts going into here and then this uh, buck converter here might be reducing it down to a lower voltage to feed something else. Now there's a lot of claw marks on this before so maybe the previous repair shop was trying, trying to take it off. Maybe it's burnt underneath here, I don't know. I'm just presuming the board's taken a huge amount of heat. Right, it's starting to loosen. It's taking a huge amount of heat. I think it might be slightly burnt. Come on. Yeah, it's stuck in that corner. So it's, uh, it's probably welded itself to the board. There we go, come in now. Problem is it's going to take a load of uh, pads with that, I can feel them lifting up. There we are. Yeah, it's taking that bottom, you see, uh, well you won't see, but there's a, a black pad there. That's why it was so hard to take off. The pad's stuck to this because it's burnt. Can you hit, see here, that's where it was stuck. So I think the previous repair shop did try to take it off and that's the reason why this MOSFET has got like claw marks all the way around the edge. You can see where the tweezers have been trying to grab it. Right, I'm just going to clean this up with some IPA. Right, now I'm going to get back to this later because I need to take my daughter to the dentist and my car needs uh, defrosting. It's freezing here at the moment. So we'll be back very shortly. Right, I'm back. The defrosting took forever because it was as much frost on the inside as the outside, which was a nightmare. Anyway, it is really cold at the moment. Let's get this under the microscope because we're not going to have any idea what's going on like this. Right, this is incredibly small and uh, annoyingly the sort of main APUs in my way. So I'll probably get liquid metal everywhere. So what have we got? This one here, let's have, tell you what, let's have a look at this one up here. So we've got those three connected to there. We've got this middle section connected to the middle of it, which also travels on traces down here. And then we've got this massive one down here. So let's see if we can see this one here. The middle section travels down traces. So where would this middle section travel to, I wonder? Uh, one second. It travels down traces there. See, I can't even test which is ground because everything's shorted at the moment. Uh, well, this must be connected through to here. So what I'm wondering, has this layer shorted with this layer here? But then if we look further down, there could be, there could be traces in the middle here that have gone, you see. I mean, look, it looks like there's a trace deep down, doesn't there? Look at that. Okay, well, we can only do what we do. I don't think this is gonna be, I don't think this is gonna be repairable. And I think the 150 pound was a sort of, a, if it was to work. So I need to peel that back. See, I think the layers are conducting because it's gone to carbon here. I think they're conducting right the way through because that copper is going to be touching the copper here and I don't think it's supposed to. And if that's all carbon, that's all completely burnt. Uh, see, if I just peel away too much, I'm going to lose what's going on. It's very confusing. 
So they probably gave the quota of 150 to take the risk, you know, is it going to be fixable? And if it's not, obviously they don't charge the customer. But then if it does work, it's worth their while doing it for 150 pounds. So those vias are going to be going right the way through. So I can't just break them. But saying that, some of those would still take it, even if I was to break these. Tell you what I'll do, let me just get my meter. I just want to see if we still got a full short on the incoming. No, we haven't. It's gone to 60 ohms. Let me just go to the overhead camera for that. Right, look at this. Can you see my uh, meter here? And if I touch the leads together, you can see under one ohm. But yet when I go onto here now, it's grown to 59 ohms. That's good. I wonder what it should be though. 59 ohms. Ah, uh, okay, let's uh, have a look again. I wonder where that got cleared from. Do you know what, maybe that was just purely taken off this. I didn't measure it straight away, did I, when I took that off? Yes, yeah, so that's a different layer there. Can you see underneath this, we have this bit here. Do some IPA. The layers are so thin. So we have this here, and then we have an in-between layer just here. You can see it just flexing, and then we've got more copper underneath. Wonder how far that burning is going. Look at that. You can see that it really is an absolute mess. These capacitors must have gone up to some serious heat before they uh, before they completely gave up. Because I don't see, I don't think this would have just happened within a split second. They must have been kind of on fire for a little while or something. But anyway, what's happening here is the carbon is just conducting through the layers. Carbon does conduct. If you want to see that, you can actually watch my Dyson fan video that was quite an interesting one that had some serious carbon build up so uh, yeah the carbon could be conducting between the layers here or the layers might physically be touching each other because of all the damage it's quite easy just for a little bit of bright copper to touch another little bit of bright copper and then you've got a full-on shorts so i'm just trying to kind of peel back the layers at the moment to see what i've got going on the problem is though i'm trying to get rid of the short but i don't know what's underneath here it would be amazing if there was just five layers of solid copper ground plane but it's unlikely isn't it look how busy the board is there's going to be little data lines and everything running all over the place so uh, yeah I, the odds of fixing it are very very slim but right now I'm quite interested in this so I'm just kind of working my way through it through the layers see if I can find out where the carbon stops and where the carbon stops hopefully then the conductivity will stop and I might be able to do something with it so uh, yeah just relax listen to a bit of music and then uh, we'll pick up the video in a little while So you can see this bit here, I still think that's big enough to carry that ground plane right the way through. And so I'm going to fill up this area with solder mask here. And I'm going to, well, I'm going to lift that up. So I'm going to fill up this area with solder mask, and then I'm going to put it down here. And then I'm going to fill up this area on top of here with solder mask. And then I can kind of roll that bit down. And I've got to try to remake a pad from here over the solder mask to here. And then hopefully the MOSFET will connect to the new pad that I'm making. 
and then that will connect, that will connect, that will connect, that will connect, and these three will connect. Now, whether the MOSFET's working or not, I don't know. But uh, at this moment in time now, without the solder mask, the, let's have a look just to make sure that the short's now gone. Yeah, so it looks like the short's gone. That should jump to one ohm in a minute. There you go. Sorry, one mega. Right, I'm uh, happy with that. Let's get the solder mask out. So this is what I'm going to be using here. And it's going to go off when I use the UV light on it. So the reason I'm introducing the UV mask here is when I put the UV light on it will go rock hard and then I'm hoping it will give insulation in between the layers because I can't just leave it like this because it's just going to short again. Uh, but if I put down the UV mask I'm hoping then it will act the same as insulation in between the layers. It's not ideal but uh, I can't think of what else to do here. So I have to uh, build it up and then use the UV light to make it go hard and then put another layer down and then when it comes to the very top layer I'm going to use copper tape which is slug tape a lot of people put it around pots and stuff like that in the garden because i believe slugs don't want to go past the copper so they go the opposite way and they leave your pot plant alone so i believe never tried it but anyway i use it for this here it is sticky but the problem is as soon as any flux is introduced onto the board it's just going to lift off again but at least it's nice and thin and it's copper i'll make sure i get pure copper i presume they're all pure copper and uh then you can remake nice little tracks and stuff with it. So that's what I'm doing here. And then hopefully when we do this bit here, we can look into maybe either reusing the MOSFET that we've got or uh, see if we can get another MOSFET. Pop it on there and then see if this PlayStation 5 comes to life or not now that the shorts has gone. And just quickly say, obviously this isn't easy because of the size of it. It looks big on the screen or the phone or the TV you're watching it on, but in reality it's tiny. These tweezers are actually quite sharp. You wouldn't want to stab yourself with them. And that's what makes it so hard. Any little kind of movement that you do on your tweezers, one millimeter might go a third of the way across your screen. And you might think I'm making massive inch movements left and right. I'm not, it's just super, super small. Like for example, the tiny capacitors that you see dotted around, if you flick them off, you barely, you wouldn't, if, if, if it was on the floor, a clean floor it would look like a speck of dirt a tiny little speck of dirt it, you know you wouldn't be able to recognize it as a capacitor at all even if it was on the desk about a foot under your eye you wouldn't recognize it as a capacitor that's how small these components are and that's what makes it so hard okay so you can see that that does look much nicer now apologies for the uh, fibers but uh, yeah you can see it all you know, it makes sense now, doesn't it? So I do have to put caps from here to here, but what I can do is I can just kind of place them in the middle and then run jumper wires either side. Right, here goes. Are we gonna have a short? So I'm going on the main two prongs just here. One point two megohms, fantastic. Yeah, so you can see the short's completely gone. Excellent news. Right, on to the next part of the video, which is going to be another voiceover. This whole thing's one big voiceover because I was on it for hours upon hours. Anyway, this is the ribbon cable that you've seen was damaged earlier on. This feeds the white and blue light. It tells you what the PlayStation's doing, like turning on, turning off, flashing blue light, etc. So, I don't know what's happened here. Screw damage or something, I presume. Anyway, I'm using my grinding pen just to scrape away the plastic there, and that will expose the copper tracks on the inside. I now need to add a little bit of flux to that, and then what I'll have to do is I'll have to tin up those tracks because we've got a jumper three tracks right the way across. The mistake I made here is that I had my soldering iron set to the same heat as when working on, working on the board and obviously this uh, is a lot thinner and it's plastic it just melts really easily. Not such a big deal though because it kind of does me a favour it separates out the tracks which will make it easier for me to solder onto because it doesn't need to be thin you know what I mean? There's loads of room down the side of the PlayStation to put this in. So, uh, yeah, that's just me trying to separate the tracks out. 
And then I get some enameled wire. With enameled wire, it's got enamel on it, so you have to burn away the enamel from each end before you be able to solder to it. Some people will just solder straight onto it. Uh, I, I don't always seem to have luck with that. I'm not sure what the problem is there. Maybe I need to have a bigger ball of solder or something on my iron. But anyway, I normally try to melt the enamel off the end of the wire and then solder it on. You'll see now in a minute I'll get a lump of solder here. There you go. And you see I'm rubbing it there. It's fast forwarded, but I'm rubbing it there against the enameled wire to burn off that enamel. Right, so I need to jump up these three. I know it looks awful. And then uh, once we jump them up, we then have to check for continuity from one side of the ribbon cable to the other side of the ribbon cable because we don't want to seal this all up to then work out afterwards that there's a short. So that's what I'm just doing now. Just going across each one and I'm checking for continuity with the beep and also making sure that they're not shorting with their neighbor. Yeah. Once I'm happy for that, I get something called uh, liquid tape. Smells like shoe goo if you used to skateboard. And uh, yeah, basically it goes on liquid. And then after a few minutes, it goes, well, not maybe a few minutes, maybe 20 minutes or something. It goes nice and rubbery and makes a nice good seal. So uh, I know it looks a mess, but it will actually be pretty good as far as the seal is concerned. And you know what? I actually don't think this will fail because that will uh, hold onto it there pretty good. So, uh, and also once it's in the PlayStation 5, it ain't gonna go anywhere, is it? It's just gonna sit there looking horrible. Well, I'm just gonna clean off the burn mark here. And also I've had a close look at these cables and basically it's only the outer braid, which is just pinched, it's just damaged. So a few strands have gone, but uh, the central conductor looks fine. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some liquid tape on it and then it won't short out against anything else. The braid hasn't broken all the way through and a central conductor hasn't broken all the way through either. So while I get high on nostalgia because this liquid tape has the exact same smell to me as shoe goo that we used to put all over our skateboarding trainers to try to get an extra few days or weeks out of them, we'll give a shout out to the massive, the massive members this month are kitdigital.com, Kip Hakes, Max Rokotansky, Having Fun Repairs, Will Michaelis, Chris Seal, Felipe at MrKeebs.com, DJVG, Pigsy, Robert from Timsey's Auto Air, Daniel Watson, Zeeks C, Anthony Dean, Baza 2, Operational 117, Russ Melanson, and Save Our Stuff. Thank you so much, guys. Now, next up, I've got to show you the replacement MOSFETs because I found a place online, DigiKey, that sells them. And then I can show you the difference between the MOSFET that was on the board originally and a working MOSFET. Okay, I've ordered up the MOSFETs. You probably recognize the bottom of them there, and that's the item number. And I bought 10 of them, so I got them for 16 pound and 17 P for 10. So one pound 62 each, but that excludes VAT. So you're looking at uh, around about two pound per MOSFET. Not too bad. And I bought a few other bits as well to get the delivery up to, I think it was 30 something pound and then it's free delivery. I think it's coming from the States, but earlier on it did say two days, but uh, I, I presume it's gonna take longer than that. So uh, there we have it. I'm very tempted to actually take one from a working one. I know that's naughty, but at least then it means I can sort of, it's on my mind whether or not it's gonna work. And I don't know if I can wait for these things to arrive. So uh, I might do that. Now I've got my replacement MOSFET. I like to say that I was sensible and waited, but I wasn't sensible. I took it out of a working console. Very dangerous to do, but do you know what? When I put this on full, it's, uh, it, it took it off no problem. As in, it was off within about, I just warmed up the area, directed it on it, and it was off in about 45 seconds or something. So it was all to do with airflow. I thought that if you had the airflow too high, maybe it could act more like kind of cooling because it's sort of blowing down so much that I thought maybe if it was a little bit lower, it might have the heat more on it rather than blowing everywhere. But no, in this instance here, higher airflow is definitely better. Anyway, remember on these ones that they were shorted to here, all of these. Well, now on this one, it's not shorted, only on those two. And this one I haven't tested yet, but nothing, nothing. Short, short, and nothing there. So good. So these two are good. This one is faulty. So it could have been when I was removing 
the old one that maybe I kind of shorted something on the inside but because of the burn area there I would say that this got incredibly hot and then it fried itself so uh, yeah now let's get these on the faulty board let's see if we're gonna have any more life than we did before Okay, you might wonder what on earth is going on here. Apologies. I'm saying things like remember when. See, I've tested this MOSFET a few times in a video already, but I've got so many hours of footage and microscope footage that I just have to get it down to a video which is somewhat watchable. So basically, on the faulty MOSFET, the one that was burnt, remember the burnt corner where I couldn't take it off next to the explosion on the board? Well, all the outer pins on the MOSFET are shortened to the massive inner pad so uh, I wasn't sure if that was normal or not as it turns out it's not normal now you might wonder why have I got two MOSFETs there yes I took one off my working perfectly working PlayStation 5 which is obviously not good but I took off the second one on the faulty board because I wanted to make sure it would come off easy when it wasn't burnt. We know that that MOSFET hasn't got any burn damage. And when I used my airflow up high and at 500 degrees Celsius, it came off really easy within about I don't know, 30 or 40 seconds or something. That gave me the confidence to then take it off my working PlayStation 5. Contrary to belief, I'm not a complete idiot and I wouldn't want to damage my PlayStation 5 to try to fix a board which realistically is unfixable. Kind of eBay junk, but good for spares I think we can definitely agree that now uh, I'm not saying it's not gonna work though <laughs> now uh, the interesting thing there is on the two good MOSFETs the second one on the faulty board and my PlayStation 5 you see that they don't short to that middle pad all those outer pins do not short to the middle pad or two of them might have done I can't remember but anyway it's different than the faulty one but bear that in mind for later in the video the central pad is shorting on the faulty MOSFET to the outer pins, okay? So some of you will already know what that might possibly mean. But uh, yeah, so now what I'm doing is I'm putting back on the MOSFET. I'm also putting on the massive capacitor because I wanted to get that out of the way to give me access to the MOSFET. And then I'm putting on a good MOSFET onto my repaired part of the board. The reason I've done mountains of solder on the repaired part is because when I've put copper tape on, it's not going to be the same height as the existing parts of the board. So I put mountains of solder on so that hopefully the whole MOSFET will sit higher. Anyway, that's what I'm doing in this part. Okay, so it's back together. We have the original MOSFET back on here and the faulty one is here and a new one, working one, is put on there. Let's see what it's going to read now on here. Are we still going to have the short? Come on. No, we haven't. Excellent. Is it going to go to mega ohms? Might be still a bit warm. It does that and then it comes out and comes back as mega ohms. Right, okay, fantastic. Right, let's put it back together and see if it's doing anything different. I have got my hopes up and I shouldn't have really. Obviously, there's no clamp or anything down, but I'm not going to leave it plugged in. I just want to see if there's anything lighting up. Okay, here goes. I'm plugged in. Place your bets. Yes or no? Uh, I just don't know. I'm going to say yes. Come on, please be good to me. Ready? Right, that's not good. Where's my lights gone? Here we go. And oh, now straight off again. Fan did spin though, didn't it? Hmm. Oh, 
I don't know what to... Oh. I don't know if I'm going to be able to take it much further. I suppose I could Google uh, blue light straight off, see if it's got any uh, inkling of what it is. See, when that damage occurred there, it could have uh, it could have gone on and blown something else, you know, the main APU or one of the other main controller chips or something. No. Okay, leave it with me. I'm going to Google what uh, a one second sort of blue light and then off actually means. All right, it's only a few seconds later. <laughs> Look what I spotted. One second, let's just take the fan out. So, <laughs> look at these USB ports. They are completely mangled. Can you see? They're all together, it's missing the middle, but they shouldn't look like that. They're USB 3 ports, so there should be like a, uh, well, just like any USB, there should be something in the middle. Can you see? These are all shorting against each other. So, I suppose, is that what's caused the inside to blow, or not? Because some of these are going to be data, and some of these are going to be power. So what I need to do is I need to get a bit of cardboard in between them to separate them. I wonder, is that why? Seller never mentioned that, and I don't think the repair shop would have done that. Let's check the port at the front. I think they look okay, so that's USB 2 at the front, isn't it? Right, okay. The ones at the front look okay. So we're going to have to try to separate them. I'm just going to get a bit of cardboard. Right, let's see if this margarita pizza will do the job. Imagine if it started to work now. Okay, so the top is separated from the bottom and they're not shorting to the actual uh, ground at the side. And again, they are separate from each other and they're not shorting to the uh, surround there. So now let's try it. Is it going to work now? Here we go. Fingers crossed, come on. Come on now, ready? Blue light. No. Oh, come on, how many faults has this thing got? So, so far we've had two USB ports that have gone. We've got these things here that were trapped. We've got the ribbon cable, which has now been repaired, and uh, the blown, blown hole in the board. Yeah, and also it doesn't do the blue light every single time I press it on. Okay, All right, let me look up what a one second blue light is. It's a shame, I thought that was going to be it. Okay, it's one of those things online that many things can cause it. So, uh, uh, I watched a couple of videos and both of the ones I watched, it was a shorted capacitor. Now, this is the good board here, but remember, I have now removed the MOSFET from here. Yeah, this is the, the fully working one. I shouldn't have touched a MOSFET, but it came off easy, so I'm confident that when the new ones come, this will fully work afterwards. If not, I'll do a video on it. Anyway, check this out. If we go onto this rail down here, I'm just on ohms test. Well, I'll tell you what, let's just for ease go to continuity, then we go to ohms, then we go to diode. I found a difference between here and here. So if I go on this massive rail here, can you see that it's completely open? But look at this one. We have a full on short. Also, what I'm worried about is USB ports. We know that the pins were touching, so you're definitely going to have, for example, five volts going onto the datas. And look where they go. They go into the APU. Can you see the tracks go down here and in? So that's not very promising. Anyway, so that's that. Now let's go to normal ohms and you will see if I go onto a, a ground my meter showing 
2.6 ohms and if I go here 2.6 so it's like a full-on short if I go onto this one here again go onto ground it should be 2.6 but go onto here and it's uh, fine it's in the thousands of ohms yep now diode test again you can see that reading there and if I go onto here so we definitely have a short there that's not on the working board. So what I'm gonna do is, let me just double check it is on that coil. I presume the coil goes to there. I'll tell you what, I can just, yeah, I'll get my coil. Hold on, one second. Yeah, there you go. So I'm gonna put voltage in. I've got my bench power supply set to one volt at five amps. Let's put voltage into here and use the FLIR cam and see if anything gets warm. Okay, I've got my bench power supply set to one volt, five amps. If you have a look here, you will see one volt. So, let's see what's gonna happen. So I'm gonna use that to my ground. It's drawing five amps at 0.89 volts. Now, is anything getting warm? No, but it's drawing a huge amount of amps, isn't it? One second. Nothing's getting warm on this side anyway. Five amps at near enough one volt. 0.8 volts. Well, there's nothing. There's nothing there that I can see. Just reflections. Let's spin it over. Please, something show up here. Where my lead is. Do you know what? This is going to be in the board, isn't it? These are just reflections. Oh no. Ha ha. So the short must be in. Would it be in the board itself? No, I think this has beaten me. So basically, it's not showing anything on the flare cam that's getting warm. I mean, you can see how warm my hand is. The only thing that's lighting up is reflections. So I wonder what's drawing that. Right, all I can think is that it's uh, a short in the board, in the layer. And it's, because the thing is we cleared, we cleared the main fault on here, didn't we? But yet, I'll tell you what, let's just see now what the ohms reading is. I think it's on another layer that goes through. For all I know, these here could go through an underneath layer there, and that's what's uh, that's what's shorting. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, that's what I think, but I don't really know. The problem is my working board now. I have removed the MOSFET from it, so maybe readings could be slightly different. Okay, so next day now, and it's time to give up. I spent another few hours on this last night, grinding away at this area here. I'm not convinced that the short is coming from here. Originally, 100% it was, or it was coming from that uh, MOSFET there. But, because remember, we didn't have the 12 volt rail, it was shorted here, it's not shorted anymore. I think, this is what I think, I think, I know everybody always says the APU, <laughs> uh, but I think the APU is actually faulty in this case because we have a full-on short on this rail here, a full-on short on this rail here, and a full-on short on this rail here. Now, there is a chance that all these three go via here and it's shorted out, you know, that is possible. But when I put voltage into it, I definitely have 12 volts here I definitely have 12 volts here 
because I have them on the other side. I can show you that. But uh, this then isn't regulating down to, for example, one point something volts or whatever this one is. See, I don't know what this rail is, this rail is, and this rail is, but I presume they're gonna be feeding this, but I don't actually know that. So I don't wanna take that off. Obviously, if it's not that, please put it down into the comments below. I mean, it could be uh, it could be any number of things. It's just a bit weird how we have three shorted uh, rails, not just one. Uh, these two might well be linked, but would that be linked to that? Not so sure. Also, I plugged in my working board back in and I got the white light. So uh, that's uh, that's good. So this will be working fine. And you can see that I've put my uh, MOSFET back on here, the good one. So at least I haven't damaged anything apart from the board that I've been working on. And realistically, it was beyond repair. If, I think anyway, if they could have fixed it for £150, it would have been £150 well spent. There's no way you would make any money on a board like this. I don't think even if you were a professional because all that digging around and having to patch everything up and stuff, that takes a lot of time. Even if you were doing it day in, day out, I'm sure there's still many hours work in that. Anyway, I just wanna show you the different voltages because we do actually have three different voltages here. So it's not kind of completely dead. It's just that we haven't got the lower voltages. Right, so if I plug this in here, if I set this to uh, DC volts, so check this out. So you know already that we have 12 volts here, but remember we didn't originally because it was shorting out. Well, let me just untangle myself. If we were to go to up here, we have five volts here, 3.2 here, 3.2 on the fan. There you go, we've got our 12 volts there. Uh, on this fuse here, We've got five volts that side, five volts that side. I've gone across all the fuses, they're okay. So basically what we're missing is the lower voltage side. But remember I said about the 12 volts going through. Well, this is the opposite side. So this is the uh, bottom one here now. Now obviously we're not gonna have anything here because of there's nowhere. Uh, there's nothing connected. I wonder if we've got anything here though. Yeah, there you go, so we've got 12 volts there. So the 12 volts is feeding this power rail, but yet there's nothing coming out of it because of the short. Likewise with here, if we go here, this is where the burnt MOSFET was, 12 volts here and also 12 volts up here. No, this one, there, 12 volts. But it's not coming through to feed these ones because I mean, I've removed the caps and uh, coil now, but still there's a short going forward. So that's why it can't generate. So uh, yeah, so it's interesting. When the fault's further into the board, it doesn't knock out the main power supply, but yet it doesn't. Uh, so if, if you haven't got 12 volts, it's gonna knock out, but if there's a short here, it's knocking out the main power supply. But when the fault's further in the board, the 12 volts is going into the board and it's different, generating the different voltages to five and 3.3, but it's not generating the low voltages, like the one volt or whatever this uh, main APU takes. That's my take on it anyway, but I'll happily be corrected in the comments below. And obviously if it is something simple, then I can do a revisit video. But realistically, I think this is gonna be used just for spares. So there we have it. Well done, Vince, you picked another pig of a console. I don't think anybody could have fixed this one. I don't think this will ever be fixable, but I think it will go on to fix many other consoles in its uh, throughout the next few years. So hopefully, its life won't be in vain. I really did try on this one. Apologies for the kind of the, the way it was all voiceovers and stuff. Honestly, I was hours upon hours. I really put a lot of work into this, but it wasn't to be. The sort of thing that's slightly annoying me is the initial cause, and maybe you could help me out in the comments down below. Was it the USB ports that shorted? Because the repair shop's not gonna rip those USB ports out. I presume that was the original owner. Was it the USB port shorting that went into the APU that caused this to fail? and then somehow because of that, it shorted those capacitors and blew up the MOSFET? Or was it the shorted capacitors that blew up, shorted out the MOSFET and then put 12 volts into whatever that rail was feeding, whatever the MOSFET was feeding? I presume the APU, but I could be wrong. For me, it's just really weird how that looked like the honest fault because capacitors do go short. What on earth's happened to the USB ports? Do you know what I mean? Unless, of course, the original owner thought that's how you get into it or something. It just doesn't make any sense. That really doesn't make any sense why both of the USB ports were faulty. Uh, so you put it down in the comments what you think. I think it was the capacitor that went faulty naturally and then the little fire happened, shorted the MOSFET and sent 12 volts through into whatever 
that is feeding and i think the apu and i think the usb ports have happened happened since then but uh yeah all very very odd but what i do know is i bought a pig off uh a playstation 5 there so basically uh, i'm doing my bit for society i took one for the team and at least now it's just me that's disappointed i've had an hour-long failure video so i'm sure there's going to be a bit of abuse in the comments and uh yeah but at least somebody else didn't have to go through the heartache did i enjoy it yes and no i enjoyed kind of the uh, initial bit there when i thought i could fix the trace up i enjoyed the scraping back and doing a solder mask i thought that looked really nice i thought that actually looked beautiful by the time i'd finished but uh, then to have that not still not working and then to fix the ribbon cable and for it still not to work and then to have the usb port shorted and to unshort them and for it still not to work is a bit of a gutter if i'm honest with you because i spent a whole load of time on it you guys don't get to see a fix not even sure how entertaining the video is and i don't get that yes feeling when something's working again so yeah a little bit disappointing really but there we go that's the way it goes hopefully next time i will be more successful because i've had a bit of a string of failures it feels like so uh, yeah i'm wanting to have a success next time. Until then, take care everyone and I will see you all very soon. Thank you so much for watching.